One of my favorite things about working in data is the fact that you don't have to be a full-time employee to work on a data team. And nowadays it's actually pretty common to work as a consultant or a contractor. But how do you know which route is the right one for you? Because I know a lot of people are interested, but there are differences. And as somebody who's been on both sides of this, I was an employee for many years and an independent consultant now for two years at the time of this recording, I figured I'd make a video talking about four of the bigger differences you'll notice working as a consultant compared to an employee so that you can make a decision for yourself and at least feel a little bit more prepared for what that's like. So number one has to deal with onboarding. And by that, I mean, how do you start your work as an employee or a consultant? And the way I summarize this is that employees, they get onboarded to a company. Consultants, you're gonna get onboarded to a project. And there's a very distinct difference here because when you're an employee, you are an investment of the company for the long haul. So they are gonna roll out the red carpet for you. You're gonna have some nice trainings, maybe shadow some other people. You'll learn about the history, maybe the vision or the, the values of the company. Whereas consultants are viewed a little bit more transactionally. And this is not a bad thing. It's just the reality of what the dynamic is. As a consultant, you're expected to already be experienced or skilled in whatever it is you're working on and ready to contribute pretty much day one. So two pieces of advice here from both sides. As a consultant, be prepared to potentially get thrown into the fire. You gotta learn on the job and it's just the way it goes. And then for an employee, if you're somebody who is either interested in becoming a consultant or you wanna really level up your skills, if you have a consultant on your team, pick their brain, take advantage of that and try to learn from them as much as you can and apply that to your own career. Because a lot of times they have experience not just in the company you're working at, but in a handful of other companies that you can really learn a lot from. Next has to do with final decisions on a project. We just mentioned that employees are usually brought in for a certain task and they have experience, but a lot of times the final decisions are gonna come down to the employees of the data team or of the company. And I think this should be expected. They are the ones who are gonna manage whatever you're building for the long haul. Of course, there are exceptions here and a lot of times consultants are heavily involved in advising and sometimes they may be the decision makers depending on the dynamic but this is something to be aware of and just make sure you act accordingly. So again, two pieces of advice here. If you're an employee, just be mindful of this dynamic and kind of respectful of the way communications go. And if you're a consultant, just don't take it personally. Number three has to do with career paths. And this is an important one because as an employee, you usually get a pretty clear career path set out for you. You know, you know, if you're going to work for this company, you work for X amount of years, you're probably going to become a senior or a lead or a staff or whatever it's called at your company. And you can kind of envision where you might be if you stick around for a while and do a good job. Alternatively, if you're a consultant, you set your own career path. You have to determine what your job title is, what's the type of work you're gonna do. And really it's gonna be up to the marketplace and the job environment of whether or not that's something that's gonna work out for you. But really what I'm trying to point out here is if you're somebody who likes to know exactly how things are gonna go, or maybe you feel uncomfortable with a lot of unknowns, being a consultant is gonna be a little bit of a struggle because there are a lot of unknowns. You're really the one who has to set the tone for what things are gonna be. You have to keep yourself up to date, learning, going out, finding clients, and kind of setting your own value and your own job title. You're not gonna get an annual review from your manager. Instead, your value really and your performance is based on your clients and are you still in business. The upside of this though is that you have the potential for much faster growth. You're not waiting for an annual review to get a raise. You could get a new client and get paid more. You're probably gonna learn a lot faster because you're gonna be exposed to different things. And maybe you're somebody who doesn't really care about those things because you're not gonna be bound to one single culture or one single company for an extended period of time. There usually is an end date to it. So uh, from that perspective, maybe that's a positive for you. Now, two pieces of advice for this section. One, if you're an employee, never underestimate relationships in your career, whether you decide to stay as an employee or you go at some point to a consultant, having good relationships along the way is invaluable and something you don't want to underestimate or just blow off as you're going through. And then for a consultant, you can't neglect lead generation. This is how you're gonna ultimately stay in business and how you're gonna get that feedback loop for how you're performing. So whether that's through cold outreach on LinkedIn or Twitter or job posts or creating content like YouTube or blogs, you need to really think about how are you going to get leads and keep yourself going as a consultant. Which leads us to the fourth and final point here, which is talking about money. Employees will have salaries and obviously with bonuses and benefits, but as a consultant, you have rates. And that is how the money conversation will often go. So as an employee, every paycheck, whether it's every two weeks or every month, you get a portion of your salary as a paycheck now, and the company will also withhold taxes, contribute to benefits or 401ks for you. So there's a lot that you don't really have to worry about. As a consultant, you're constantly in negotiations for your rates. 
So whether that's a rate per hour or per project or per day, that is something that you set that you're going to then bill based on your work. So that's a much different workflow than having a salary that gets sent to you every two weeks. You also have to be responsible for withholding your own taxes and paying them on time for handling your own benefits, making sure you have the right insurance. And I think this is the area that most people get hung up on. And I highly recommend doing your research on this before you decide to take that leap. But once you feel comfortable, it's definitely possible. Now, all things being equal, in my experience, you can make more money as a consultant. But the caveat here is it's not as consistent or smooth as you would get as an employee. So there's a lot of ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. But if we're just talking dollar signs, in my experience, you do have a higher number typically as a consultant. Now, I want to leave this section with two pieces of advice as well. If you're an employee, if you want to raise, you need to bring it up and you need to ask for it. Otherwise, you're just going to continuously get probably the lowest amount because if you don't say anything, you're essentially indicating you're willing to do the work as is. There's no issue. And why would the company go out of their way to spend more money and increase their expenses if you're clearly still willing to do it for what they're giving you? So understand it's all a negotiation. Don't be afraid to ask. And even if you don't get it that first year, at least you're on the radar and you've spoken up and you've made it clear that you expect a certain number. And for consultants, you have to be comfortable with negotiating and also saying no. And this is something that's hard to teach. You just kind of learn on the job. You're going to screw up a few times, but understand that everything's a negotiation. Being honest and transparent is usually very effective. You're better off saying no and waiting for a better opportunity that's going to pay you more than just getting antsy and jumping on the first thing and missing out on a potentially better opportunity. So definitely keep that in mind as you get into that game and start to negotiate with potential clients. So again, a great perk of data engineering is just this ability to be flexible with your working style, whether it's a consultant or an employee, but hopefully now you have a better understanding of the differences between the two, especially when it comes to onboarding, how decisions are made, your career path, and then ultimately money. So thanks as always for watching. Let me know if you wanna see more videos on this topic or if you have any questions, and I'll see you at the next video.